Welcome to the RPG Podcast. And we are live. Oh, God, Pat! Presented by Sheep. A Time Wheel Production. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Robert Patton Global Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here today with a yet another outstanding guest. His name is James Leo Kraus. I think I did a Wikipedia on the middle name, but uh, been a big fan since I, I saw you on The Ultimate Fighter, you know, the show. And just you had a really big impact. You're very skilled and just very impressive with your martial arts and whatnot. So thank you so much for coming on. Oh, man, thank you for having me. I'm stoked to be here. Beautiful. Um, yeah, because you've I've been watching you. You know, I saw you on that, but then I start I see you in uh coaching a lot, you know. And yeah. and I mean, I guess we could get kind of right into it because you seem to be winning, like a lot of your fighters are winning. It's it's in my <laughs> yeah, like from what I see. It's good. Yeah. What are you doing? No, I mean, we know uh yeah, well. Listen, I, I'm gonna. I, I'll answer your question, and then I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you that story. To tell you this story, I, I really do think that we just have a new school approach to things. Like we're very progressive and modernized in the way that we approach the game of MMA. And uh, I think I'm a much better coach than I am a fighter. Uh, I think I obsess over the sport, and I obsess over winning. And I'm a competitor uh, as a fighter and as a coach. And I think uh, me specifically as a coach, I don't think there is a there, I don't think there's a closer correlation from fighter to coach right now in the game than myself, just because I still, you know, I don't wouldn't say that I'm an active fighter, but I still do, you know, compete. I don't do it as often as I used to, but I mean, you can't really get as close. You know, there's guys like Mike Brown, who's, who's right there, you know, he competed, but it's been a long time since he competed as well. So I think, uh, I think one of the advantages that I have over a lot of the coaches is, I'm able to see what really works. You know what I mean? It's easy to see like guys say, Hey, how do you get out of this triangle? Like I can tell you how to get out of the triangle and I can tell you what works. Cause there's, there's, there's two different things, right? There's, there's something that there's something that like, I can tell you 15 ways to get out of the triangle. Then I can tell you what I would do if I had a gun to my head. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, I think that's the things uh, that, that matter is like what works in competition at the highest level of the sport. And I think that's what's important. And that's what needs to be uh, taught now. However, I will say this, like, man, if it's one thing that I have learned in, in fighting and coaching is, is, uh, everything goes like this, right? It's like, it goes in ways because with more wins that you have come tougher opponents, tougher opponents becomes less margin of error, less margin of error means you're going to lose more. Right. So, uh, I try not to let that go to my head. You know, I just, I'm a competitor and I want to win. And I think, uh, and I think <laughs> to be honest with you, man, I think that we've had a couple of fights recently where just like a winning culture, you know, a winner's mindset, it's got nothing to do with skill. Like you watched last week, that had nothing to do with skill, man. You know, that's not true. It had, it had something to do with skill, but it was his desire, Jason Witt's desire to want to win. Over Barbarina. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, I, and him and I, we, you know, we, push together to win. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm, I'm going to make you win. If you don't want to win, cool. I'm going to make you fucking win. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, and I think that's the attitude. We push a winning culture in our gym. And I think that's really important. He knows that he trusts me as his coach and, uh, he's willing to go out there and do whatever I say, you know? And I think that's really important. And obviously it takes a, a brilliant execution on his part to do so as well. And he did that phenomenally. So I think it's just trusting the teammate, trusting the process. Uh, I'm a firm believer that confidence comes from trusting your buy-in a process, and uh, he's he's a very good representative of of what we uh, what we offer at in my gym. He showed a lot of heart. Also, I mean, he was going <laughs> against Barbarina, who's been very impressive over his career, and I honestly expected him to win. He looked very cool with his mohawk, and he was looking like. I, it was a close fight. It was a really close fight. Mm -hmm. I guess it really could have gone either way, I think, right? It wasn't a finish. Or was uh, no, no, it was a decision. It was a decision, yeah. but it wasn't, uh, I mean, we, the third round, the first two rounds were ours. The uh -huh. third round got a little dicey. The that's third round was back and forth crazy, right? So we, we almost got finished. Yeah, but the, that's what it the was. first two rounds were ours for sure. And we 10 mm -hmm. him in the second. And ooh, that's a big one. Yeah, domination, 10-8s. Yeah. I love that. 
So you say you push a winning culture and uh, to me, that means like a winning mindset. And how do you, what do you teach to keep, to make them think positively and have faith that they're going to win? Is there any visualization meditation? Uh, yeah, I always, I always, uh, there's not, I don't think it's formalized because everybody, every athlete is different, right? Like you can't really, uh, and when you start, when you start, uh, you start making people do stuff is when mm-hmm. they really shy away from it. You know what Fair. I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. you're not going to make me do that. So I really push, uh, visualization a ton. Uh, I don't like meditate. I've never been big on it. Like I, I, my brain doesn't like, I have a scramble brain. My brain doesn't stop. So it's really difficult for me to sit still and, you know, and be still and think, uh, I, I do encourage my guys, especially visualization. I do. I, to me, you're saying the same thing. Meditation mm-hmm. and visualization are mm-hmm. very similar, if not the same very, thing. So very similar. Yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, so, I, I, but I some people that. meditate through running or exercise, you know, sure. or just doing doing. You can actively meditate. It's like being present mm-hmm. and uh, uh, mindfulness. So I try to practice a lot of that stuff myself. As a, mindfulness, mindfulness is the word. Mindfulness right. is the word. And and and. Uh, Depending on who you talk to, some people will be a stickler and say meditation is only sitting in a quiet place. I don't believe that. Uh, I think mm-hmm. the word that we're all talking about is mindfulness. And I, mm-hmm. I, I, I encourage my athletes to be very mindful and be very intentional uh, about not only what they're doing every day, but everything that they're doing, how they talk to themselves, uh, how mm-hmm. they approach their rounds. Uh, you know, and they, we want to win. You know, we well, want to win. And it starts at the bottom. You know, how, you want to win they- around, win everything. Well, it starts here a little bit, right? And, um, you know, how they talk to themselves is interesting. And I brought up Rose Namajunas recently and how she was saying, like, I'm the best in the world, I'm the best in the world, I'm the best in the world. And a lot of us say, I'm a piece of shit, I suck, nobody likes me. But, you know, like, we need to correct that. And I hope it sounds like you say that you're kind of reinforcing that thought pattern to Definitely. be positive stay positive so i have an athlete uh, gina mazzani and uh she like she's super positive with everybody else but herself uh-huh. and she said she made a comment about she's like i'm just not that good or something and i was like you know what i'm gonna try something i was like i was like yeah you know this is not really your thing you're not really good at it or what you know it's like and then she would just go in and i'm like yeah i mean Give it up. It's just, you know, you're, you're not very good. You kind of, you're just kind of average at this. You know I mean? She's like, like got offended that I said that. And I, she's like, why are you saying that? I said, you thought it was okay for you to say it, but I can't say it. Like you, we, are you offended that I said it, but you can talk to yourself. Like, I can't talk to you like that, but you can talk to yourself like that. And she's like, Oh, I see what you did there. Like, said, don't talk to your fucking self like that. Don't allow, don't talk to yourself how you wouldn't allow somebody else to talk to you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like that's crazy. It's so crazy, but we all do it. And I don't, I mean, you know, we might compare ourselves to other people who are bigger, better, faster, stronger. And, you know, and then you look, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as that. But you kind of just compare yourself to yourself in a past self. And as you make progress, you will see that you're a fucking pretty good person. You know, I mean, at least we all are pretty decent at heart, you know, and a lot of fighters, I love fighters because they're putting their heart into their dream and giving it everything and risking everything to make that happen. You know, that girl that I forget her name that she head kicked and got uh, this past weekend, she got a head kick and got a fight of the night. Uh, performance you're of talking the night. about Cheyenne uh, Bays. Cheyenne Bays. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, that was, that was a beautiful thing. And I mean, everyone's kind of talking about that, you know, and how, it's like changing her, her life. But one of the things I thought of when you said teaching things that work in a modern day martial arts, the way the girl was getting up, her opponent was probably not something that you would teach, I would imagine, because she left herself right, right, right open for the head kick. Yeah, you stand up in place. You, you always want to go, you know, and uh, go back. It's like, it's just a typical traditional stand up. It's like you always, your head goes back, you leave with your. Uh, you don't lead with your head like that. She stood up in place. Like, oh fuck, you can't do that. Don't do that. You know, and I noticed Strickland was he the way he punches is like he does this, and it kind of reminds me of Adesanya too. Which I, when I practice or whatever, I'm like, oh. But I, you know, today I was hitting the bag, and I was like, let me try this shit. And what do you? 
you know, like leaning back and punching or whatever. Doesn't that seems more safe? Uh, so you're gonna get me going down the uh, down the rabbit hole right now, but uh, I'd like to you know, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm uh I'm big. I'm always trying to get like cutting edge on like how can I advance myself and my athletes above everybody else. And I think one of the biggest things I've dove into the rabbit hole lately is uh, is personalities, more specifically, uh, like working through the the Briggs Myers personality test. You ever taken one of those? I have. Yeah. So like typically, uh, every athlete is either uh, fine motor skilled or gross motor skilled. Oh. So that hiding behind, uh, we were talking about is leaning, uh, hiding behind their shoulder. Yeah. They use it as protection. It's more of a fine motor skill trait. Uh, somebody with gross motor skills would have a lot harder time doing that because yeah. they don't understand gross motor skill. People are typically more, uh, physically dominant. They're more limb related. Like they, they can, they're going to impose their will on you where fine motor skill people like Strickland, like Izzy, they're going to move around you. Uh, like Izzy, isn't it? They're like extreme, extreme fine motor skills. He's, he's going to move around you. He's got good feet. He understands range. He understands this, right? Uh, to where that's not a gross motor skill uh, thing, right? Um, gross motor skill. Like, I'm thinking like Romero or Costa. They're like like root, Khabib root. would be an ultimate gross uh, motor skill. Yeah. Somebody like Khabib. Uh, uh, Romero is another one. Uh, Costa is another one. Vittori is another one. Vittori. Like, you know, yeah. They're, they're they impose themselves on their opponents to where like Izzy uh, and there's some other you know obviously there's some other guys. I'm extreme mo- uh, fine motor skilled. Um, mm. I'm trying to think of some other ones right now, but it, they're very finesse fighters. They move around the the opponent rather than moving the opponent. Well, that was a see you learned something, and and <laughs> well, and that's how you could separate fighters, you know, because they're different styles and there's different mindsets, there's different body types, I guess, and that you're taking it deep into the like um, research of all the aspects, and I love that. Yeah. I think that's probably why you're getting such a high win percentage with your fighters. At least every time I see you there, they win. I don't know. How, if that's, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> and I watch well, most of the fights. I watch, I'm I, a super fan. I started, I started doing it just to learn how to communicate with the athletes mm. better. Like how, what makes a, uh, ISDF or ISJF, you know what I mean? Like what makes an ISJ, how do I communicate with that personality? So all my, all my athletes took the test and I have a list of it. So if I'm having issues or I'm having a hard time explaining something, I look up their thing and then I look how to communicate with, you know, how does my personality communicate with their personality? What are they thinking? Cause it's, you know, basically like, how does, how do you speak their love language? How do you get through to them? And it's, I've just found it. You can, you can correlate things. You can make analogies to, for them to better understand that makes it click. You know what I mean? And, uh, but within that, you go into motor skills and how they move, how they, you know what I mean? Like, um, like a quarterback versus a running back gross motor skill versus fine motor skill. Like how did like one sees the field as a whole and one sees the field unfold, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, it just, you got to know who you're talking to, you know, you just have to know who you're talking to and what they're doing, what their strengths, what their weaknesses are. And I think, uh, if you can, if you can learn how to communicate with somebody and then, and then not only how to communicate with an athlete, but if you can communicate to that athlete on, how they can effectively assert their their dominance, whether it be moving somebody or move around somebody. I think you're going to get. Uh, I just honestly, I just spent five minutes telling you, like, how do I get this guy to show up to the best of his ability every damn time? You know what I mean? Like, if he's a if he's a B minus fighter, how do I get him to show up as a B minus fighter every single time instead of a C fighter that night? You know what I mean? Because sometimes you get A minus fighters that show up at C level that night. You know, it's like shit. He looked like shit that night. Cowboy. I don't know. I, LOL. You, I want him to show up. I want him to show up what the best he can be every night. Yeah, man. It's such an important aspect of the mind. You know, when you get in a fight with your girlfriend and you're like, fuck it, nothing matters. Like how the, how, you know, that's not going to translate well into a fight if you're no. fighting the next night or something. And that's, you, you know, I thought you were talking about, when you said you were trying to learn how to communicate with the fighters, I, th- I actually thought you were going into like, that's why you started coaching because you wanted to learn how to like teach. I don't know. Like you, when you teach something, you actually learn it better yourself. Sure. I thought mm-hmm. maybe is, what got you into the coaching. I just started coaching. Cause I mean, I, honestly, it's like, uh, 
there wasn't like in MMA, man, there, there's nobody, there was nobody really doing what I was doing. I would say that I was like the first fighter out of Kansas city to say, fuck it. This is my full-time job. I'm training full-time twice a day, every day. Mm. And uh, there was other guys doing well, but I think I was the first one to really like make that progressive jump. Like, Hey, I'm doing this. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't just a thing where I'm going to fuck around and train three times a week or, you know, even once a day, I'm doing this twice a day. Wow. And, uh, I think I just fell into it. I've been coaching for since way before I should have been, I've been coaching for damn near as much as I've been fighting. It's just, I'm just now starting to get known for it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm just, yeah, I've been coaching for almost 15 years. Oh my God. Okay. Well, yeah. See, you're a uh, overnight success after 15, yeah. 15 years. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people think that, you know, I had the idea for Sheath in 2008. And so that was like 13 years ago. And it took a long time to get where we are now, where we're oh, yeah. able to sponsor the champion of the world and best coach in the UFC and a yeah, lot of others. So awesome. Yeah. We're, I'm very blessed and um, just looking forward to growing as the sport grows. I love the sport. I don't necessarily want to be one of those like affliction or tap outs where they disappear. So I'm trying to sure. like, manage how deep we get into it, but I don't, I don't know. I think that's culture, man. I think that's culture. Like it's, it's culture and it's relationships. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you create a good culture and a good relationship, that's fun to be around, man, that's, that's, that's culture. That's what that right. is. And those guys didn't have culture. It was like, Hey, I'm throwing money at everything that, that moves. And that's not, people aren't loyal to money. People yeah. are loyal to culture and relationships. You yeah. Know what and I mean, like, mm -hmm. well, and I'm trying to build that. And we have a philosophy of kind of uh, positive, the mental attitude and, and, yep. and like a, a attitude of gratitude and abundance, that whole abundance mindset and, and just positive, a lot of positivity and like harmony balance cheese yep. like all fucking lined up and you're yeah. got all your energy chakras operating at the proper spinning rate and whatnot do you i thought of bruce lee a minute ago do you i, I would imagine you were have at least a fan just maybe yeah. just a, yeah who's not a fan right yeah. doesn't really matter yeah i don't know because he would like the the mind state of it all he was kind of into that whole thing and like be like yeah. water and that mm -hmm. was just pretty cool, but we won't stay on that. I, I tattooed sheath on my back because I did this in 2013 and it was like zero was worth less than nothing at the time. And I did it because I didn't want to give up on pursuing it. Cause it's easy for people to quit. Right. And, uh, I thought that if I got the tattoo, I wouldn't give up and I haven't, but if I had, it would have been a very, embarrassing story about having this tattoo on my back about this dream I gave up on a long time ago. And you have it on your back, your name, right? Yeah. It's more but of a stupid thing I did when I was 18, but yeah, I mean, I uh, feel like it has, there's something weird about and call me crazy. I might be totally wrong, but just you're betting on yourself. I don't know. I mean, and maybe it had no, um, correlation to at the time it did at the time it did i don't really yeah. look at it like that anymore but when i got it it meant a lot to me you know what i mean uh like i said i got it on my 18th birthday so it wasn't it's probably a fucking dumb dumb thing uh... for me to do but uh yeah i mean i am i just i think at this point like i've, I've been doing it for so long that i don't need a tattoo to to say that yours is way fucking cooler than mine you know because no matter what even if i even if i quit bet on myself my last name's still gonna be cross so that's true <laughs> like your, your, your story is way cooler than mine but that's uh, true. man I, I respect passion you know what i mean like in that like when somebody is is passionate enough to get a tattoo of their company and their dream more importantly their dream on them that tells me they're passionate about it man uh I'll, I'll tell you a story i was in a i was in a hotel room and and uh, this this guy J dustin jacoby he's in the ufc too he was telling me about how he had a friend that uh, has invested like $200,000 of his own money into this crypto that I'd never heard of before. And I'm big into crypto. So for me I to never too. hear about it, I, I'd never heard of it. It's HBAR. Have you heard of HBAR? No. Uh -uh. I, I hadn't either. And he told me he invested $200,000. I started looking it up. Bro, I, I put $1,000 into it right now. This podcast is brought to you by ohanakavabar.com. Now, Ohana means family, but what is kava? Kava 
is a route from the South Pacific. It makes you calm and happy. Just go to ohanakababar.com. Choose your favorite brew. They have many to choose from with more on the way. And I personally like the tincture. It tastes good. It gets you quick and you're calm and relaxed in a moment. It cools and calms the nerves. And I think you'll like it. Let them know we sent you. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors and support this company. So go to ohanakababar.com. Use promo code SHEATH. You're going to love it. It doesn't taste that great. But chase it with a nice pineapple. You will not be disappointed. Trust me on that. OhanaCalvabar.com. Ohana's family. Use promo code SHEATH. You're welcome. Last but not least, SheathUnderwear.com. The greatest underwear on the planet. The underwear of legends. The underwear that keeps your balls from sticking to your legs. That's right. This is the best underwear because it keeps your boys cool. Check out sheathunderwear.com. Back to the show. Somebody is passionate enough to to put 200 grand of their own money into something. That tells me that they believe that shit. You know what I mean? And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to throw $1,000 at it. You know what I mean? I, I, like, I gotta, I'm, I'm riding with this guy. I can fuck with passion. I, I'm, I'm with that. I threw like a thousand into Safe Moon, I, and that's <laughs> what I, I I'm like kind of um, diversified. Telcoin and and what's there's one Ethereum's going up right now, which is kind of nice. Yep. My whole portfolio is is up a good percentage because I I sold when Elon did his like said that Bitcoin was gonna like yep. use up too much energy, and I sold it like fifty. So I sold that's good. At you know, not quite the top, but close enough. That's damn then, close, though. Yeah, and when it get went down, now I'm I'm buying back in, and I, I'm. Are you talking about Bitcoin? Bitcoin, Ethereum. What do you think about Bitcoin? Because I don't know. Uh, that's my the most heavily invested one I have. Okay, good. Because yeah, I'm buying. It's like back. it's like McDonald's. It's like McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like there, there's there's McDonald's, it's Walmart. They're the first ones to be there. I just don't see anybody else uh, top on them. And you're and you're talking about. You know the 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 retailers, the Visa, Mastercard, uh, Citibank is putting valuations on nice. on. You know they put what did they put a uh, at the end of twenty twenty one they put a six hundred twenty five thousand dollar per coin valuation on on Bitcoin. Uh, Citibank did it. Fucking I mean Mastercard, Visa, all the and and they're all doing it. You know what I mean? Okay. Like that tells me that there's something. And those guys know way more than we know, right? Like. That oh, tells yeah. me there's something there. You know, when those guys start making plays on it, that tells me there's something there. Yeah, well, the China thing scared me, but, uh, you know, because that's a huge economy. And if they're not accepting it, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Well, and yeah, then, man, but like China doesn't accept Facebook. They don't accept YouTube. They don't accept Netflix. Like, we're doing fine without China. You know what I mean? Enough. And I, that's no disrespect. You know what I no mean? No disrespect, like, of course. But no, I love it. But that's, that's, I, I like that a lot because I bought in whenever that floored after yeah. that. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a uh, man. I don't think, I think at this point there's no stopping it. Right. Like it's, it's, if you, if you take a look at what the government's doing with the economy and I don't, I don't know how, how deep you want to get into this topic. You but, all I mean, the way. We just are printing money. Yeah. We're hemorrhaging, not, yeah. not millions, not billions, trillions with a T yeah. trillions of dollars. And I know, I know a lot of my fellow fighter fighter friends, don't know what this fucking means but it means our dollar isn't worth shit anymore you know what i mean like it, what's inflation this year alone five plus percent probably more uh, on certain sure, things more. right for sure it's more yeah. for sure it's more yeah. uh so that means your hundred dollars is not worth 95 you know what i mean it's your buying power is 95 dollars from last year and it's like these guys just don't understand that you know and fuck if you look at a savings account you get if, if you're lucky you get a quarter of a percent on your money and saving if you're lucky way lucky with inflation, 5%, if you're losing, if you put $100,000 in the bank next year, you have the buying power of, of uh, 95000 right. right? So, and give or, give or take a little bit. But like it's, these guys just don't understand that part of the economy. And it's, it's, uh, it's scary, man. It really is scary. These guys are printing money hand over fist. And you can't do that with the whole point. I told you that story to tell you this story. 
with Bitcoin, it doesn't work like that. Bitcoin, there is no middleman. I don't need the government. You know, there's, there's minimal transfer fees. I can transfer you a million dollars right now with a click of a button. And there's and a, somebody, a, a miner somewhere takes a very minimal fee. The bank doesn't know about it. It's posted on the blockchain, public record. You know what I mean? Like we can yeah. move about our day. Yeah, and, and you don't get taxed for you're not getting there. You're not getting the government involved in our transactions. It's true freedom. Of if I don't want, uh, if I want to buy a house, I don't need a fucking real estate agent. I don't need to go. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to go. To, I don't got to go to the fucking bank. I can. Do, you know what I mean? I can do it on the blockchain, and it's done. It's you take your little cut for uh, processing the transaction. Done, and that's that's the future, in my opinion. Uh, especially with the way rates and shit are. Like rates are flooring. Uh, they're giving money out. Like, the real estate market is insane right now. Like it, it's going to pop at some point. What do you think about like, why are there so many different big like coins? Like there's all these coins, Shiba Inu and Doge. And all <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at every business, there's always going to be a bunch of bullshit ass businesses, right? Like, like well, look at, uh, go ahead. No, no, I just, it, I, I, yeah, I wanted to get your opinion on it. So you, uh, a lot of them are shit coins and they're called shit coins, yeah. but some of them like Ethereum is actually useful and yeah. ADA. I bought into ADA. I'm pretty, I heavy. have ADA. Okay. I'm pretty heavy in ADA Same. and it's going and it's going up and it's good. I believe and, in that. I think that's okay. great. Okay. Well, those are my three biggest ones. And I bought this one called comp C O M P and it's, the, re the thing behind it is it's going to pay at like a, a, an annual dividend of mm -hmm. like 4% or something. So on top of the value, it, it's like the first one to pay a dividend, which I thought, so I was like, yeah, I'll buy a couple of yeah. those. No, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I mean, just so you look at fast food, there's McDonald's, there's Wendy's, there's Burger King, Hardee's. And then you have these busted ass shit places that small you know, people make up, they have no systems, no processes, no thought behind what they're doing. There's no technology behind it. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the biggest way that I can tell people to, to look into uh, crypto is like people are buying a currency, right? I don't look at it like that. I don't buy the currency. I buy the technology. Uh -huh. Right. So like, what is, what is the, what is that the technology behind that currency that makes it, uh, that makes it special? That's what I believe in. Like, you know, Ethereum is its own, its own, uh, it's got its own system. Like other, other cryptos operate off of that chain. Right. Right. So that's unique in itself. Uh, Bitcoin was just the first one to do it. Uh, you know what? Uh, Bitcoin is the same thing as what PayPal was 10 years ago. Okay. Just the first one, first, the first heavy hitter to come to the block. You know, now there's cash app that works great. There's uh, Venmo. That's great. There's Zelle. That's great. But PayPal still that motherfucker because it was the first one here and it was the first one to do it right. Yeah, good point. Another El well, that's Elon Musk. But, He's a uh, savage, bro. Yeah, I, savage. I like I like him. I you know I was heavy on that Saturday night when he went on Saturday Night Live yeah. and I was like that was at the peak and uh, and I was hoping it was going to go up further. It was so weird that everything crashed after that and it's fine. It is what it is because it's going to go back up. Agreed. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, I didn't sell. I didn't sell a penny of it. Okay. I w when he said that, and I was like, "What is this energy thing? It's using the same amount of energy as a small country or like the Netherlands." I was like, "I don't know what that means." I'm gonna pull out because I know the market's gonna freak out. I can always buy yeah. back in, and I just that's what I did. So, no, it's a great move. It's a great now move. I'm I'm, back. Yeah, I'm an investor. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't care. I didn't buy it for what it's gonna be six months from now. I bought it for what's gonna be five years from now. I like I like your attitude. I I got freaked out, you know. I woke no, up. No, yeah, absolutely. Well, and then and then the that whole time everybody was checking their phones like every five minutes or whatever. Has it gone up? Has it gone up? And uh, I woke up and I think this was after the whole Elon thing, but I was still in a little bit and I was trying some other coins, and I was ADA, and uh, I wake up and for whatever reason it was the screen on my phone, and I mean like my coinbase was open and i saw that it just fucking was like yeah. ha it went from two dollars to a dollar and i was like fuck i sold it all and oh, oh. and then like oh. 20 minutes later it was back up and i was like if i just hadn't even seen you know like if i hadn't opened my phone yeah <laughs> so i don't even I, look at it i don't even I look at it yeah that's smart i I was, I felt pretty stupid afterwards, but I bought back in like 15 minutes later. I lost 
some transaction fees and a couple thousand, but I just, I caught myself. I was like, why did you do that? So I just, but you paid it. You paid a couple thousand dollars for a a lesson that you'll never forget. Yeah. Yeah. You will never make that mistake again. No, never. That was so crazy. That was so funny though. And I told some people and a lot of people started, um, I mean, a buddy of mine that owns Ohana Kava Bar. This is oh, a sponsor nice. of our show, Ohana Kava Bar. Go to Ohana Kava Bar and uh, use promo code SHEATH10 and you'll save 10% off of your next purchase. Kava, have you ever heard of Kava? No. It's a root from the South Pacific that makes you calm and happy. They do it like in ceremonial uh, kind of whatever. I got to check that out. Yeah. I need, exactly. all, I need all the calm and happy I can get. They call it an herbal Xanax. It's, it's, it's like a root. It's a plant medicine, if you will. So, and he's a good friend of mine. So I wanted to shout him out, but he sold all his shit a couple, uh, like a couple weeks ago. He was like, Ugh. it's a scam. And I'm like, no. God, yeah. No. And, and, you know, it's all mindset too, though. A lot of this shit is just belief. If we all say it's worth what it is, then it's worth what it is. And if we all say it's worth less, then it's worth less. But I think it's the, worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. Yeah. And it's, it's not going, it's going up, you know, it's just going to, it's going to go up. I think it bottomed out around where it's at now. I mean, it bottomed out at like 30 and now it's back up to like 40. We're talking about Bitcoin now yep. again. It's 40, and, but I, I could see it going back down into the twenties again. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. Anything is possible. Right. But Some I weird... think, I think after that, I think if it drops one more time, I think you're going to see it hit, take off. I really do. And, and man, companies like, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, Visa, MasterCard, they don't get into random shit. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like when they say, hey, we're putting money here and we're going to accept this. And and you know what? And and another thing is just in uh, countries, El Salvador, that is the legal tender of El Salvador. Oh my God. (laughs) Every person in the country had 90 days to transition to Bitcoin. Wow. Well, they're not the only one. And I, you know, the, the finite amount, I heard some talk about um, expanding that. Have you heard anything about that? The no, finite that's possible. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just saying. I heard it. I heard. I hear things. I yeah, I don't know. think that's possible. <laughs> Good. Because then that would ruin the value of it. Yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 is a, that would defeat the whole purpose of it. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. I'm just checking. I'm just no. That's... I I I'm into it. I was. I'm like every morning. I'm reading a couple of little blurbs about what. Well, don't sell that shit again. I'm it's no. going up. There you go. Yeah, and I, I hear the people that are in it still just, you know, they're holding. Everybody's holding. So now I can get back in, and I will have made out like a little bit, but nothing too crazy. I want. I want one of those. Ones where you get it for under a penny and then it goes up to $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Same. So that one you were talking about, HBAR, how, what is where, sorry, what, what's that at about like price wise? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, oh, it's, uh, it's cheap, super cheap, super cheap. Uh, sub penny? Sub a dollar, I think. So, okay. Okay. Good. That's close enough. I like that. I think I, I could be wrong on that. It, it might be around a dollar. Okay. I'll check it out when I get up in the morning. You know, the last fight I saw you fight, we'll bring it back to that. It was so cool. Even though you lost to Trev- Trevor Giles, Trev- De- yep. Trevin Giles, and uh, you put on such a good fight and you were like short I was notice. In, I was in Houston. I'm in Houston right now. I got PTSD from coming here. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to be there in no. November for Skank Fest. I don't know if you've heard of, heard of Skank Fest, but it's... Uh, I have not heard of Skank Fest. It's a... It's a bunch of skanks walking around in bikinis. Just kidding. It's a, a comedy festival. A lot of oh, nice. like all the comedians you've probably ever heard of should be there. It's it's a big deal. It's in nice. Houston and uh, November 5th through the something. And we'll, we'll be there sponsoring it and just attending it. But uh, you're in Houston. And is how is it there? It now? Yeah. Hot. Okay. Homeless. It's good. It's a, it's a good town. It's a good town. I like it. Is it like I was just in Austin and the homeless thing was fucking ridiculous. And it's like that I, here too. Where are you at? 
I'm in Colorado. I mean, I live at, where I'm at. Actually, I'm in the middle of the mountains. But when I go down to our major city, just 30 minutes away to Colorado Springs, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, there's just a lot of it's just a pro, you know, there's a lot of homeless people. Yeah, yeah I mean, probably every major city. I think it's a it's an issue. I'm for sure it is here. I haven't really had a chance to get out much, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it is. Yeah. Okay. So you're just you know at the gym and the hotel at the, the hotel. Arena. Man, I'm stuck in this damn hotel. Okay. I'm not stuck, I guess, but I've been here all day and just try to get work done and grind away. You know the deal. Well, so work, you know, I I heard you also like own businesses and things. Is that mm -hmm. so you're, how do you manage all that? And tell me about that a little bit, if you would. Yeah, please. I have, I have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, yeah, I don't, I have uh, three gyms. We have three gyms in the Kansas City area. Wow. Uh, I'm really big into real estate. I think I have like 14 or 15 doors now. Uh, I'm not sure. Wow. Rentals? Rent somewhere in there. Rentals? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then th <laughs> that right there keeps me, keeps me pretty busy, but uh, oh. there's other small stuff I do as well. The Metro PCS is that, I, I read something about that. Is that, or, uh, am I right or wrong? You, yeah, uh, I, I sold those, but I, okay. I was invested into Metro PCS. We had uh, two stores in Kansas City. Uh, we sold those though. But, yeah, I think uh, I think that was probably a good move, just from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I once again, I I, I think that uh, it's why I say once again, I did a podcast earlier today, and I said that that was the single worst investment that I've ever made in my life, uh, and it's the only investment I have a rule that I don't invest anything that I can't have a daily direct impact on, and that's the only thing I've ever invested in that I couldn't have a daily direct impact on, and uh, it's the only thing that I've done that really hasn't didn't do well. And if you really stop and think about it, I think cell phones will be obsolete in the next, I shouldn't say cell phones. I think cell phone service will be obsolete or very minimal within the next five to 10 years. I mean, at some point, I mean, how much of the earth is covered in Wi-Fi right now? I mean, you go to Europe, the whole damn squares are, it's covered in uh, Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? Like, okay. So cellular service, but we'd still have our phones that just be operating off Wi-Fi or whatever. It would be Satellites. off of a Wi-Fi. Yeah. Just a big ass. Wi-Fi satellite that switches from satellite to satellite or doesn't switch at all. I mean, you could pretty much do, you could probably do damn near close to that now anyway. Uh, you know, and if they, if they, I don't think, I don't think it's crazy to say that there's a satellite, a Wi-Fi satellite that covers uh, an extreme amount of space. You know what I mean? Uh, Technology is advancing every day. So I don't think, I don't think what I'm saying is crazy. You know what I mean? People may think it's crazy, but you can walk into a fucking Starbucks and then down the street, the square has got Wi-Fi. You walk into McDonald's, it's got Wi-Fi. Any business has public Wi-Fi now, you know? What about the desert? Just satellites? Uh, no, I, I think at some point they'll have a satellite in space that just covers the earth. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm pretty uh, sure but that's even what... in the desert now, some cell phones don't have servers though. Exactly. I think Elon is doing a satellite. Uh, Wi-Fi service. What is it called? Telstar or something like that. I have it. It's not out yet, but he's launching satellites and I'm actually going to get it because I'm in the mountains and I'm using, I have two different internet services servicing my house just so I can have like podcasts and watch TV at the same time. So yep. that's what we're dealing with. And, you know, they have ethernet right across the street like my neighbors across the street have it and some somewhere around COVID they, you know, before they stopped developing that and it's still to this day. It's so uh, crazy. They have fucking, what is that? Anyways, just ethernet. I mean, uh, not even Google fiber. It's what I mean. Like yeah. super yeah. fast internet. So I'll get it though. I'm being patient. See, that's funny. Why did you invest in the Metro PCS then? Like, because the, I, my, what I think you would say is, well, they were investing with the UFC and like there was all this promotion and stuff, and you're involved in the UFC. That's what uh, I get. no, I actually, I actually invested before they were partnered with UFC. Oh, okay. Uh, I one of my one of one of the jobs that I had before I made it to the UFC, I worked for uh, T-Mobile, and T-Mobile owns Metro PCS. So my old boss that kind of let me pick my own hours and such uh he needed a partner to go into a metro pcs store so we did and uh i helped you know help with that and we got involved and yeah were you did your you sister you so you sold but it, if it wasn't valuable how could, did you sell did you sell it at a loss i presume or something or 
you do okay? So the company, the company was at a loss, but they did uh Metro PCS. Like our business was at a loss. Yes. But one of the things that I had a huge benefit of was Metro PCS would bring in special guests, like, and do like watch parties. So they bring in like Clay Guida, they bring in Chad Mendez or whoever, and they pay yeah. them out. Every time they did that, they would pay me to go with them too because I was the, the bridge between the other athlete and the Kansas city market. So they use my social media to bridge that gap to get everybody at this watch party. And they would always pay me to do it. So did the company lose money? Yes. Did I lose money? Absolutely not. Well, that's good. So have you ever read any, you know, do you read like self-help books at all? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's your what, reader? Yeah. Well, my favorite one is think and grow rich. Have you ever heard, heard of that or read that? Oh yeah. Okay. Second best one. Second favorite one. Okay. That's the, that's why you're so successful. Maybe what like and you, the way you're talking about how many businesses you have, it reminds me of like rich dad, poor dad or something. Rich but dad, poor dad's up there as well. I, yeah, it's up there. I, Seven habits is my favorite. That's my, that's my, that's my, that's my Bible. That's your Bible. Okay. Think and grow rich is my Bible. Seven habits of what a successful, what is it? Seven habits of highly effective people. Oh, I'm sure. You never read this? I don't know. I oh, not. man. <laughs> Stephen Covey. If you never, if you've never read that, that's that's the holy grail of self help. Think and Grow Rich is my number two, uh, and then How to Win Friends and Influence People would be number three. Yeah, I read that. I read that for sure. And my, my you know, my other one, it's actually like a spinoff of Think and Grow Rich. It's a little bit. Yeah, I've read that. So good. Napoleon Hill. Yeah. yeah, he's my favorite. I have a picture of him. He's I, great. Uh, yeah, just I've watched his videos and I, I remember I listened to an unabridged version of or an abridged version of Think and Grow Rich. It was like two tapes when I was twenty three and it just like lit me on fire and shit. You know, yeah. I don't know. It was like this is amazing. And I remember showing my little brother who's my uh business partner in Sheath and you know, he's, he was 13 at the time. So he's getting this information yeah. about believing in yourself and going the yep. extra mile and the mastermind Alliance and all that shit at 13. So when I had the idea for Sheath, he was a catalyst in pushing me to, even though I had read it also, he was like even that, that much more in ingrained in his brain or whatever to uh, act, you know, and take action and, when you get that inspiration, so a lot of people have ideas to become a millionaire. You'd be su- surprised how many people tell me they had this idea that I have for Sheath. Like, they're like, oh, I had that idea, you know, but they yeah. didn't do anything. Action. Yeah. And you're a man of action. Man, I've never had a business plan ever. Like, there's people, there's a bunch of people that put business plans together all the time and they never take action. I've never put together a business plan ever it. in my life. Every business I've ever started was like, yo, you have two months to make this work or you're going bankrupt. And I just do it. That's yeah. And you figure a way. Yeah. Right. You, you, you have a vision or whatever, not even a, like there's an obstacle. There's a way around it. There's always a way around it. Right. Usually. Definitely. Oh, I mean, uh, I think there is, I think, yeah. there, I mean, I was just always willing to do whatever it took. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just not everybody's wired like that. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, because to be honest, I see people that are like much happier with much less than me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and it's like, less stress. I, I think, I think whatever makes you happy is what you should do. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you, if you, uh, I think people, a lot of people want million dollar businesses or homes or whatever, because they think that's what everybody should have. And I think whatever makes you happy is what you should do. You know, if, if working the way I work to get, what I have doesn't make you happy. Don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's but also passion. don't bitch if you don't, uh, yeah, it's the passion, but don't bitch if you don't have, if you're comparing yourself to other people that are putting that work in, you can't bitch about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's the thing. There's rules to I, this. <laughs> I like work. I like songs that are like work, Same. work, work. You know, you, uh, Brittany has that song. You better work, bitch. And like <laughs> and all that, you know, Drake and Wiz Khalifa about getting money and oh, hustling yeah. and, getting after it. That's the, my kind of music because I like this and I was doing, I'm doing podcasts for free because I like it and it's up like a passion and I want to do it and I want to get better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I want to get, become a better communicator um, because that's so key. And I'm, I've been 100%. a little, 
iffy on the communication skill level over the years. But as I get you know more and more podcasts under my belt, I feel like I'm getting better and better. And, I like not just fucking drifting off in a conversation. <laughs> and so, you know, it's about, I'm going to be doing this for the next 10 years, whether I make it or like whether, you know, I'm getting views or not. And, and eventually they'll come. Right. And maybe whatever. Yeah. yeah. And as far as like the underwear, you know, I was doing that for like many years, no, like p- losing money, yeah. you know, for like the first, since 2008 to 2013, so five years, probably a little bit more, but we were losing money. And then we finally started making money and we did a Kickstarter. Yeah, it was, I got this faith tattooed as a couple of, that was my kind of dumb one, but it was after Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, the third chapter, I think. And you, know, you got to have like faith that what you're doing is going to succeed or you're like you're yeah. gonna be demoralized like believe in yourself and whatnot absolutely 100 percent agree so and i'm stupid with it i'm so stupid with it like i believe what i'm doing man i, I you it. cannot deter me um yeah and then obsession you know people you i'm like if you're not obsessed you will not be a success or something like that because i mean maybe you'll be successful but like the people that are obsessed are the ones that are going to just push that limit way further beyond what you're willing to do. Agreed. And so then you just go get a regular job and that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah. I saw a movie called happy and they were, you know, they're in like tents and huts out in the middle of like, in like India fucking happy as clams. They're loving it. They're just getting <laughs> water on their head and shit. And yeah. as long as you're with your, taking care of your family and yeah. friends. How, how do you, you take, I imagine you take care of people. A lot of people, a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people count on me. You know what I mean? And that's another, that's another motivating factor. You know what I mean? Like I, it goes it, like a lot of people count on me to, to, to show up, you know, to be there. Like I'm, you know, this, like I have employees, I have, you know what I mean? Like, it's not just, I have my, my kids, I have employees, I, you know, I have people that, that count on me to be on my A game every day. And, uh, especially with my kids, man, with my kids, it's like, kids don't learn by what you tell them. Kids learn by what, what you do, by mm-hmm. what they see. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I want to set a good example for them and, uh, I want to be on my A game with them. You know, I want to, I want to show them what hard work and get them. And, uh, you know, but like I said, people, people count on me for fights. People count on me to provide a paycheck for them. Uh, for employment, uh, you know, uh, people count me for housing, you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 uh, and if I, if I don't, if I'm not on my shit, uh, I'm going to let a lot of people down, you know, and that's the reality of it. And, uh, I don't look at it like I don't carry that weight or anything like that. And it's not that serious, but it's, I mean, there is a, there is an impact there on uh, other people. And if I'm not on my shit, I can't help other people. And that's the main thing is I enjoy helping other people. Me too. You know what I mean? I like, like- helping people yeah yeah but you, if you're not if you're not on your shit and you're not making money and you're not you can't help other people you know mm-hmm. what i mean that's just the reality of it and uh i was always brought up to money was a bad thing and and people with money weren't good people and uh i just think that's it's so opposite you know people with money are able to help other people and uh i learned that late in life you know later in life i feel like we're I, I'm, I love helping people. I feel so good. I, I like if I give a homeless person money, it's like, I feel good. You know, there's 20 bucks. Yeah. I read the other day I was, there was a homeless guy and, and I was, I wanted to give him some money. So I was like fumbling through my wallet and I pulled, I had like a tiny little wad, just like a couple bucks. And, and I, a 10 comes out, but I have a 20 right here, you know, and then, or, and then, so it's like, do I give him the 10 or give him the 20? And then I, I just gave it all, all to him. But, and then I, I, I just, he was like, God bless you. And I was like, God bless you. And I, I had that warm fuzzy for a little while. And I like to do that. But I also like to help fighters who are like going for their dream. They're not just, yeah, you know, um, existing. They're like fighting for their future purpose. purpose. And I like to kind of reward that, you know, or try to help push that forwards because if we can in any way impact fighters 
to achieve their dreams and be a part of that, you know, then that all comes back also like in the long run and we'll all grow together. And yep. I like having conversations like this with fighters about their mind state and like, you know, what it takes to win and or to just keep coming back. And, you know, what do you, you're doing all these things. That's so crazy. And so you're probably inspiring a lot of fighters to, to think outside fighting also. Just, I hope so. It's something I'm really passionate about, especially the, especially fighters becoming financially free from the sport of MMA. Right. That, that's something I'm, I'm super passionate about. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely something I'm extremely passionate about. And uh, I see a lot of guys that, they don't have anything to show for it at the end of their career, you know, and that breaks my heart. They've spent 10, 15 years of their life, you know, blood, sweat and tears literally, and they have nothing to show for it. So that, you know, I, I, I anybody that will listen, I try to help as much as I can, you know? Uh, but the reality is, is most fighters come from broken homes or low income families or both, or why the fuck would they fight for a living? You know, right. so it's kind of a, it's kind of a tough culture to, to talk finance in, you know what I mean? Cause a lot of them don't have money and the ones that have money, uh, it's not, that they don't want to share. It's just, that, well, it's, it's not, it's not, the ones that don't have money just don't know how to do it yet. You know, nobody's right. taught them how to do it. So, and you got to get them to chill the fuck out long enough to teach them how to do it. I just had, I just talked with Jason Knight. You know who he is? The fighter. Who is it? Jason, the kid Knight. He was, the, he was in the UFC. He has like these huge wings, like devil wings. I know who he is. Yeah. So we, I did a podcast with him the other day and he's making his debut into the PFL. And, you know, he was telling me that what you're just saying about, he was, he's got 80 grand in his pocket. Well, and he went to the bars and he partied and he wasted it and he, and just didn't know what to do with it ultimately. And it all, like all that partying, uh, degraded his performances. He ended up like washing out of the UFC and I know you're t- we're t- coming up on time here, but we'll we'll wrap it up here shortly. Um, but yeah, it's like having you as an example, though, yeah, or, you know, people like you as an example to young fighters, they might like he's he seems to have it under control now. You know, he's working his way back. Uh, he's won quite a few fights. I don't know if you how much you yeah. follow him, but uh, yeah, so he's debuting in the PFL. I hope he I hope he does well. You know. I'm a and, fan. He's a tough, tough son of a exactly. bitch. He's tough as shit. Yeah, I'm a fan. Of Great jujitsu as well. Yeah, agreed. So, and um, you know, there's so many fighters, and there's so many of us who can, you know, be like at least be an example, you know, to show them, and and uh, primarily you because you're like in it with them, and uh, and then doing this simultaneously. That's got to be insane your phone must be off <laughs> like ringing it gets a lot. Pretty, it can get crazy at times yeah yeah well um just like this conversation it goes all over the place all you know, over yeah I, I need to i need to, i'm still working on a like a linear progression of but it just kind of goes where it goes and i think no, it's, it's organic it's good yeah. it's better okay good because i liked it i had a very good time um, we're coming up to the end. I, this is like an ode to Michael Malice, uh, if you know who that is. But t- what, what was your favorite part of this interview? I, man, we talked about a lot of things that I'm super passionate about. Um, yeah. Like everything that I'm super passionate about. And you can hear my voice elevate and I start talking fast. And uh, I. Uh, <laughs> to me, it's all the same. It all correlates to a, to a degree, right? Like we talked yeah. about, we talked about abundance and, and positivity. Like and for that. me, that is like the, it sets everything in place to get all this other shit rocking, right? Like uh, the, that is like the foundation. That's the, that's the, when you build a house, that's the foundation, right? And then, uh, you know, we start talking about uh, a little bit of crypto. We start talking about, uh, I got into like real estate and what all I do and stuff like that. And, uh, I'll be honest, man, I don't think I do anything. I know for a fact, all that comes from my positivity and my, you know, this it comes from right here. All this other bullshit comes from right here. So I think when you say, what's my favorite part, 
like I get passionate about crypto and I get passionate about the economy and stuff like that. But everything starts right here for me and being a positive thinker, thinker and uh, being a progressive thinker, being uh, solution driven, not problem driven. And uh, I think people, if they put rules on themselves, they said, like, I'm not allowed to think negatively or if I have a negative thought, I replace it with a positive thought. I think they would see a direct impact on their life within two weeks, within two weeks. And uh, I know this because I went through it and uh, I see huge results, like life changing results very, very fast. Goals, the simple shit, goal setting, positive attitude, like just all starts here, man. Organizing, organizing your game, having a good attitude about going to get it and then executing. You are correct. <laughs> that was the right answer. Good job. Uh, I agree. And it's all about that positivity. And this is a very positive interview. Thank you so much for coming on here, making the time for us. Little old RPG. She no, I had a blast. Man. This, this, was, this was fun. I, I had a good time. It was a good conversation, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us once again. James Krause, Sheath Underwear. We'll see you next time. Thanks, man. Appreciate you.